All right, guys. It is a gray, gloomy, chilly evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. I think we're heading to 46 degrees tonight uh, here on May 23rd, 2022. We've got our little bouquet of wildflowers here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And uh, so the little dog and I have been busy being farmers at bugs in a jar so just starting to dive down here into the doomosphere and i want to thank uh lieutenant kevin shanholtz or was it kevin i'm thinking uh this was kevin good lord guys i get you there's so much doom and gloom coming in uh, kevin or zb anyway one of you kind folks sent me this and i actually found a good friend of mine, a fellow collapsitarian, right here in the Finger Lakes, has a cameo appearance here. And this, what this is, is this newest open letter to the United Nations and the planet for, uh, from a bunch of these, from more than 100 various scientists with brains who, uh, from an outfit calling itself University of Cumbria, <clears throat> which I think is Jim Bendel's. Uh, I, I think Jim Bendel is uh, part of that outfit. But anyway, uh, this is, I've covered their letters before, so they have a new one out. And their letter to the UN. Yes. Uh, from scholarswarning.net, scholarswarning.net. At the start of a United Nations summit on reducing the risks and impacts of disasters around the world, 100 scholars from 17 countries, including right here in the Finger Lakes, are stating publicly that increasing environmental mayhem demands a rethink of the goals of international aid and cooperation. Yes, on May 23rd, meaning today, their public letter appears in the independent newspaper. It calls on delegates to the Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction to ditch the concept of sustainable development. Yes, one of the great oxymorons of the 20th century, sustainable development. The very notion of development is unsustainable. Yes, so they are calling uh, on the platform for disaster risk reduction to ditch the concept of sustainable development due to 30 years of proven failure from its allegiance to global capitalism. <clears throat> the full list of signatories follows the letter below, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what is on the minds of these more than 100 scholars what do they have to tell the United Nations? <clears throat> the worldwide increase in harm from human-caused environmental mayhem demands an urgent refocusing of international aid and cooperation. The United Nations has reported non-existent progress. <laughs> That's exactly what they have reported correctly. Non-existent progress to meet their sustainable development goals on reducing poverty and environmental destruction. And I'm going to finish this letter, then I'm going to come back and just have my own uh, non-scientific uh, little uh, diatribe on this on, on reducing poverty 
and environmental destruction, which to me sounds almost as oxymoronic as sustainable development. But anyway, we're just going to read, we're just going to read the letter for those people more educated than me who believe that you can reduce poverty and environmental destruction at the same time. So anyway, I don't necessarily agree with that, but this is not, I didn't, I didn't write the letter and I didn't sign it. So we're going to read the letter and then we're going to come back and talk about this a little bit. Okay. As members of universities and research institutes from around the world, we know that UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was right to state that humanity is, quote, moving backwards in relation to the majority of the sustainable development goals, close quote. I guess 100% is the majority. I, I mean, 100% uh, is greater than 50%. So he is right to state that humanity is moving backwards in relation to the majority because they're moving backwards in relation to every single one of them. Uh, they, they have been a total, complete failure, greenwashing crap. But again, I'm getting off into, uh, into my own commentary. Back to the professionally written letter. Okay. As Guterres emphasized, even before impacts of the corona panic response, the, quote, number of people suffering from food insecurity was on the rise, the natural environment continued to deteriorate at an alarming rate and dramatic levels of inequality persisted in all regions." Close quote. For instance, Sustainable Development Goal number two aims to end hunger, but world hunger has been rising since 2014 with more than a quarter of the world population affected by moderate or severe food insecurity in 2019. And you better believe that is getting ready to uh, go through. The, that, that 2022 will be the single biggest uh, food insecurity year since when? Since the uh, the younger Dryas. Uh, it, 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 anyway, uh, food insecurity is getting ready to get blown off the map. You can kiss goodbye sustainable development goal number two. But anyway, back to the letter. <clears throat> Coming in the wake of the failure to meet all, otherwise known as 100% of the Millennium Development Goals, failure to meet the Sustainable Development Goals is an indication of a systemic problem. It is an indication of too many people on the planet. Of course, you are not going to see the word overpopulation anywhere in this letter. And I'm not knocking the letter, okay? Because I don't want to get my buddy pissed off at me who helped write this letter. Uh, but, but come on, guys. Where is the O word, okay? Anyway, uh is an indication of a system of a systemic problem. If the way modern societies operate calls the problems that the sustainable development goals seek to address, you know, such as breeding, uh, like we're, uh, you know, uh, 
mice in a barn in, in Australia. That's what I maybe they're talking about. Anyway, I need to uh, stick to the letter. If the way modern societies operate calls the problems that the Sustainable Development Goals seek to address, can we be surprised that those same systems are incapable of fixing them? It is becoming clear that the assumptions that underpin the Sustainable Development Goals are invalid including continual economic expansion. Now, I'm 99% sure that the Sustainable Development Goals never mention the word overpopulation. Probably don't even mention the word population, much less overpopulation. Okay, so... It is becoming clear that the assumptions that underpin the goals are invalid, including continual economic expansion, and I would add to the degree that they don't discuss the number one reason that there is no way we are going to meet the sustainability development, the sustainable development goals because you cannot have sustainable anything with an unsustainable population of 8 billion people. Now, I know my buddy knows this. I anyway, I'm getting... Uh, I need to have a margarita and chill out. What do you think, Sancho Panza? Anyway, back to the letter. Before now, it may have been convenient for politicians, bureaucrats, and people in the organization they fund, they fund to maintain an upbeat message that more technology capital and management will solve both poverty and environmental destruction. However, the evidence from the UN's own reports show clearly that it is merely a convenient myth and that billions of people would be better served by more sober analysis of the worsening situation. Sounds a little bit human-centric to me, but you know, hopefully some of our fellow earthlings might uh, benefit, benefit as well. Decades of failure must not be ignored. As we approach the 30th anniversary of the Rio Earth Summit, we publicly call on the United Nations to drop the redundant and unhelpful ideology of sustainable development. Instead, enabling communities to become more resilient locally must become a central and cross-cutting principle for international cooperation. Fair and locally led adaptation to disruptions must be complemented with attempts to transition to new socio-economic systems. That can involve some relocalization of trading relationships and energy production alongside the equitable degrowth of wealthy economies. Uh, <laughs> you know, we're getting a little bit of opium here. A little bit of opium uh, on these 100 scientists part. Yes, they, we're going to see the equitable degrowth of wealthy economies. You know, it, it, they're talking voluntary degrowth. We're going to see the voluntary, equitable degrowth of wealthy economies about the time that Sancho Panza starts a chipmunk 
uh, a chipmunk what? Uh, just a... What, what are you going to start, Sancho? A, uh, a, 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 a chipmunk uh, sanatorium. Anyway, we agree with the head of the United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction, Mami Mizutari, that quote, raising the alarm by speaking the truth is not only necessary, but crucial, close quote. So where is anybody speaking the truth about the number one reason that the United Nations has failed to meet every single one of its sustainability development goals. That there's too damn many people on this planet and we need to figure out what to do about that. Okay? We're speak some truth here, guys. I'm sitting here speaking the truth. There's too damn many people on this planet. Okay? You're not going to read it anywhere in this letter. You're not going to read it anywhere in, in the sustainable development goals. Nobody wants to speak the truth uh, about what's going on on this planet and what's taking this planet down. Is there's too damn many people on it. But anyway, it's a good start. Just a minor, minor complaint about this letter. Our own analysis supports the conclusion of Deputy UN Secretary General Deputy UN Secretary General Amina J. Mohammed that the world is entering quote a spiral of self destruction close quote. How however the only way to stop the spiral is to drop allegiance to economic growth and its attendant ideologies like sustainable development and reframe international cooperation. Okay, the only way to stop the spiral of self-destruction the world is entering is to drop allegiance to economic growth and, and this greenwashing crap like sustainable development, I would say hand in hand with one, one way to stop economic growth in its tracks is to stop population growth. Anyway. As more experts in disaster risk management abandon the idea that an expansion of economic activity is always a necessity, they could help shape a framework replacing sustainable development. There you go, I can get behind that. Replacing sustainable development whereby policy making reduces harm in the face of growing disruption, loss, and damage. Therefore, during the UN's Summit on Disasters, we call on all international agencies to help governments bring all policies into line with greater resilience and risk reduction. And of course, I would uh, say the number one government policy that we are never, ever going to see on the table again, particularly after China caved in on the one-child one policy, you are never going to get a government to bring in the one policy that will make, well, it, it won't make development sustainable uh, because there's no such thing as sustainable development, but it might 
help stop the spiral of self-destruction, although by this point, uh, I, 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 I think the spiral, we all know where it's going. Okay, so the lead signatories in a personal capacity, no less, and I am so proud to see my, uh, my bro uh, right here, one of the lead signatories, and, and, and this dude is in some, uh, he is in some serious company. I want to applaud my buddy, Jeremy Jimenez. All right, Jer doc Dr. Jeremy Jimenez, your Uncle Jeremy, is saving the planet. Right here, your Uncle Jeremy is telling the UN where they can stuff their sustainable development goals. I want you to personally thank your Uncle Jeremy when you see him, hopefully, in a few days. And uh, the lead off name here is one of my all-time heroes, Professor William Reese from the University of British <coughs> Columbia. If uh, you have not heard my interview with William Reese, uh, I think it's one of the better interviews back when I used to uh, interview people. That's R-E-E-S, no E on the end. If you want to find that one, here's uh, good old Dr. Peter Kalmus, NASA climate scientist. I've never interviewed Peter, but Sandy Shellis has a good interview with Peter on Environmental Coffee House, uh, Jim Bendell. See, he is, says he's from the University of Cumbria. Uh, Jim Bendell, we all know who he is, and Dr. Rupert Reed, uh, who I have also had the pleasure of interviewing here on Collapse Chronicles. You can find my interview with Dr. Reed somewhere on here. So any anyway, I, I, I think I've made my my own comments about here and, and I don't want to feel like I was detracting from this letter. I, I mean this letter is a good start. okay It, it has more cojones than, than other letters, but uh, th this whole thing, Maybe I will get Jeremy Jimenez to uh, come on the show and explain this to me about uh, how you can have the, the very notion of having sustainable development goals on reducing poverty and environmental destruction. Is, is, as far as I can tell, reducing poverty, meaning giving people more disposable income, increases environmental destruction. Well, it, it just makes a different flavor. What it does is it goes from, uh, it turns people from planet nibblers into planet eaters. Uh, so I, I think you hear the, you know, the Paul Ehrlich argument that, um, you know, when, when people get more money, they have fewer children. So one of the ways to reduce the population is to reduce poverty. But this is just my logic, and again, I don't have uh, a PhD in saving the planet. Okay, I'm, I, I wasn't invited to sign this letter because I do not have a PhD in saving the planet. Okay, but okay, you're, you're a planet nibbler, and you have four kids. Each one of your, you're living in poverty in some mud hut in Uganda, well, four, hell, you probably got eight or ten of them, but we're, we're going uh, to pretend like you only have four. And then one of those kids gets out of poverty and only has two kids, but their two kids 
go from planet nibbling to planet eating and the two kids eat more of the planet than the former generation's four children, you've cut the population in half, at least in that family line, yet the two kids are causing more environmental destruction with their newfound wealth than if they'd been little planet nibblers, but it doesn't matter planet nibbling, planet eating, uh, nibbling, eating, it, it, you know what I'm saying, uh, the planet's going into a death spiral. Anyway, Jeremy, if you would like to comment on, on how you can reduce poverty and environmental destruction at the same time. Now, it might it might reduce the bushmeat consumption, might reduce the charcoal, uh, you know, planet nibbling like like charcoal production. You know, so you need the charcoal to uh, roast your gorilla. You know, you're probably going to be more likely, you, you know, to eat a hamburger that you cooked on a gas grill then you're going to be likely to eat a gorilla that you cooked on some charcoal that was made from some rainforest tree. So, so maybe that's what they're talking about, is gorilla consumption is, is going to go down. Anyway, all of this talk about uh, charbroiled char gorilla is making me hungry. I highly suggest you get out there and charbroil yourself a gorilla while you still can because there won't be gorillas around much longer with the UN sustainability goals. Bye guys. And this little dog, I'm gonna go fry up a gorilla. I just wanna fry up a chipmunk. A little bush meat chipmunk will do me fine.